All right, guys, check it out. This is the Manchester Orchestra tour bus. Want to get to know the guys a little bit more? It's coming up. As promised, Manchester Orchestra. Well, at least part of the orchestra. Two fifths. Andy and Chris are here. And uh, guys, welcome. Thanks for talking to oh, us. Thank you for having us. Last time we uh, had you guys on with us, uh, I believe it was at South by, not South by Southwest. It was at ACL. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That was the last time we talked to you guys. It would have been 2009. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's how things have changed. Man, we're going to talk about 2009 because that was a big year for it was you a guys. Good one, yeah. Uh, also, so all the clothes are clean and everybody's rested and fresh because yeah. I should say it's the first day of the tour. Yeah, day Look one. at that big smile. Day one. Yeah, it'll be gone in five days. <laughs> yeah, but that's cool. I mean, this is, uh, this is going to be a fun little tour. You yeah. guys actually did, uh, Deluna Festival in Pensacola. Last weekend, yeah. We were supposed to be there, but oh, yeah. we had commitments, uh, here in Texas that we had to deal with. But yeah, was it fun? Did you have a good time? Yeah, we had a great time. Yeah. It, was, it was definitely kind of a, a bizarre festival. Um, not the most organized that, that we've ever seen, but uh, it was a great turnout. We had an awesome show. We were playing right on the beach, right as the sun went down. It was, it was really cool. Uh, my counterpart, Ruben Dominguez, got to speak with you guys at ACL. I was not able to do that interview, but uh, one of the questions that I uh, wanted him to ask, and he didn't, because right. I saw the piece, was I, I love the name, and I'm not going to get into the whole, hey, where'd it come from? Uh -huh. But I love when you guys search, you guys. The things that come up was like Bach, Beethoven, and do you guys carry little symphony sticks? You should give that out as merch, I'm just saying. Yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, it's definitely kind of been funny to watch a band name turn from something that people, you know, don't know what it really is into now that they do and they don't really think about it anymore, you know? I think it's great. And you know what? The fact that you named it uh, Manchester, my dog is named Liam. Oh, that's funny. So connect the dots. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. And it comes to... Oasis. Oasis. Yay! It's like, we just turned this into a game show today. Uh, all right, uh, you guys have actually been on Dave Letterman four times. Yeah. He must love you guys. He's a really, he's, he's been very good to us, man. We, we played him, first time I think it was 18 when I played that show, it was, it was pretty bizarre. Um, it's kind of one of those things that when you're starting off as a band, you can write home about it, and you can, something you can hang your hat on because, you know, not everybody gets to do it. And the fact that they've continued to have us on, I guess, is a good sign. That's great. I've actually been uh, to the, I've met Rupert once oh, yeah. in the deli next door and it's like 40 degrees there. Yeah, it's unbelievably yeah. cold when you're performing at the, at the Letterman show for sure. <laughs> like, is Dave cool? Is it yeah, I mean, we, most I've ever said to him was, hey, thanks. You know, he said, thanks, and that's it, you know? Most he ever said to me was, are you all right? <laughs> after <laughs> said, the first one. Yeah, he didn't really know what was up with Chris after the yeah, first one. Are you, you all right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm about right. to ask that. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Uh, great. All right, listen, uh, that brand new album, it's called uh, Simple Math. It's fantastic. Thank you. Congratulations Thanks. on it. Um, Andy, for you, it's, it's been reported, and you, I've seen the interviews, uh, that you consider this album to be extremely personal yeah. as far as the writing. Can you talk a little bit about that? I just think it was a certain period where, you know, when it came time to write the record, it was kind of this conclusion of, of um, madness that was mean everything to nothing, our record before in the touring cycle. And, so where my head was, that was really a, a kind of a therapeutic um, rediscovery of, of all the stuff that had been going on. And I guess I was kind of the floodgates open and I was able to really write about some, some heavy stuff. You can tell. Yeah, cool. And now you're actually getting to play you know, live and the response has been fantastic. Yeah, so. it seems to be pretty good. So yeah. is that kind of part of the therapy too when you get to play it live like that? Uh, I think it was more just getting it out. You know, it's kind of the, that's, that's the nice part is when people digest your record. And this was kind of a, I feel a more slow burning record for people because it's not instantly, um, it's not instantly captivating. It, it takes a minute to kind of seep in. And that's been cool to watch the growth over the last few months, um, seeing people really start to, to dig more and more into it and really enjoying the whole, whole album as like a, a whole. All right, we're talking to Andy and Chris from Manchester Orchestra. Uh, I got to give you props, and I want to make sure that people that are watching uh, know this. Uh, the fact that you guys streamed this album on your site before it even came out, I think that is kick ass. Oh, yeah. I think it's badass. And the way that things are, have changed with the traditional ways of marketing, there's competition to get your music heard everywhere. The fact that you did that, why did you make that decision to do that? I just think there's a certain level when you're releasing a record where it's going to leak, you know, and it's going to happen, get sent to a, to a plant and somebody's going to take it and somebody's going to, you know, put it out. And for us, you know, we'd rather people be able to preview an entire record on our site. And we kind of had this cool, like, interactive puzzle that you had to solve in order to listen to it. So it wasn't just, like, super simple. But, um, you know, I think it's just for people that are really dying to hear it, I'd much rather them hear it from us than, you know, some weird quality copy that's been burnt, you know, 15 times. 
what do you think about the fact, and, and you can actually answer this because you guys run your own label, mm -hmm. uh, which is brave. <laughs> I mean, you have a great distribution deal, but the fact is you run your label. Mm -hmm. And what have you learned as a musician, you know, growing up when you started to where you're at now? It's a lot of work. Yeah, I think it's it's just about content and making sure that your content is is not only like placed everywhere well, but that the content is is good and that there isn't anything worse than what you've done before. So, um, you know, we've kind of just kept to the motto of creating true music and, and making real records that are honest and, and it seems to be that people appreciate that at the end of the day. Cool, and I think it's, fat, it's awesome that you have a band uh, and, and Chris doesn't speak. Yep. I'm kidding. <laughs> Chris, you all right over there? I just wanted to get that in I'm there. I'm having a really bad day, man. <laughs> no, just it's, going downhill. It's, no, it's all good. I, you guys are great. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. This is very important. i got to ask about the uh, In My Teeth video. Uh, is that real footage <laughs> like of, of like holidays and stuff like that? Yeah, we found a bunch of that. Some of it's of our manager. Um, that, that whole album has a video for every song. And so, yeah, it was, a lot of it was picked from kind of like some cool footage from Virginia, um, you know, 30 years ago, kind of stuff that we found and just some weird reels and stuff, yeah. Because you have a red wagon in the video mm -hmm. and I never got one as a kid. Really? And I, that's the first, that's why that video always, when I knew I was talking to you today, I was like, damn it, they got a red wagon. That's I didn't. <laughs> that's where my red wagon went. Uh, but speaking of videos though, uh, Simple Math, the, the video actually, now did you guys get nominated or you, you yeah, yeah, for the VMAs, yeah, right? Yeah. We got two nominations. Yeah, it's really cool. Did out of nowhere, really. That's that's great though. That, I mean, yeah. that's kudos to you guys. Yeah, we were pretty shocked. Not something you plan for, but you know, if they want to do it, we were we were stoked to be a part of it. Okay, but this is it's 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 a it's a great video. But I gotta I gotta ask you, uh, no deer were hurt, right? In the film no, of this? not one. No, not one deer. No, four, four, deer. four deer. Four deer. <laughs> we had a couple of deer takes. Were hurt. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, it's a concept video. Yeah. Talk a little bit about well, that. Well, I mean, it was sort of a story that these guys had put together, um, and they had this real passion about it, and, and when I met with them, I just knew that that was, those were the people we wanted to do it with, and definitely took a lot of faith on our part, because we didn't know, you know, everything that they were doing, and I was doing a bunch of crazy filming, and we knocked out all of our stuff in a day, and they spent another several days filming stuff, and we were pretty amazed to see the finished product. Well, it turned out great. Uh, you're on tour right now, and it's going to take you up uh, until like Thanksgiving. And you have a thing you're doing called the stuffing. The stuffing part two. Yeah, we had it first last year. It's an annual festival we throw um, the night before Thanksgiving in Atlanta, and uh, we have all of our bands from our label play and a couple of cool, you know, surprise guests and stuff. It's it's a really it went really well last year, and we're excited about it. It's a cool day to have a show because it's when all the people are home from college and. You know, they don't have anything to do the night before Thanksgiving, you know. What are your Thanksgiving plans? What are you guys going to do? Just hang out with the family. Yeah. We well, generally, go yeah, house. Chris's family comes over to my house, and we all we all end up uh, hanging out. Perfect. I love that. And uh, advice, because the, you guys have a great story as far as, like, you've just worked, you've hustled, you've got things going. Uh, I remember last time we talked to you guys in 2009, that album had just dropped. And there were actually uh, comparisons at that time. It was like, if you don't have this album, it's, it's like, I mean, they've compared this. The critics and reviewers have said, compared Nirvana, right. uh, the In Utero album, the Weezer album, right. Radiohead, that's a compliment. <laughs> is, I mean, yeah, how, do you, how do you, how do you, does it, yeah, I mean, that's a great reaction right there. Does it blow your mind? I guess, yeah. I mean, also, we're super influenced by that, so maybe it's just like blatant plagiarism, you know? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't sound like that because we ripped it off. Yeah, exactly. Well, it worked, and that's all that matters, you know? If you steal it, take credit for it, as long, and as, long as you don't get caught. I think, you know, it was something more about the sound of the record we wanted. We wanted it to really have, you know, we kind of wanted each of our albums to sound different, and that was definitely a, a period of music where we wanted to, um, to kind of dive into and, and get the overall, you know, vibe of a record kind of